um, so we are carrying on from our um, refracting telescope lesson um, and we finished by me just showing you this image last time um, and this is showing you the setup of a um, refracting telescope so it has two refracting um, it has two lenses two converging lenses but it's basically i know it looks complicated but it's basically the same as um what we were looking at um when we were drawing the ray diagram um of the real image it's the same kind of thing um but we've just got two lenses stuck together that's that's the only difference so that's the only thing that's making it more complicated so if you just imagine like um put my laser pointer if you just imagine um ignoring the right hand lens for for a moment this is exactly the same as what we were drawing um earlier so we've got our object over here rays coming straight through the middle and ends up over here and then this other ray coming through hits it and then goes horizontally along so the point where they meet is the image Okay, and this image, because the um, rays of light are coming from infinity over here, they are parallel to each other. So that means that the image will be formed at the focal length of the object. So FO is the focal length of the objective lens, so O for objective lens. Um, so that's that first, the left-hand side of the diagram. Now, if we switch to the second diagram, the second part of the diagram so we just look at the right hand side now and again just ignore the left hand side for a minute so here now what was the image is now the object for us so here if we draw a ray coming through horizontally and then it goes through the focal point over here and then this uh, ray here or it's actually this ray over here but they're parallel um it's just going in a straight line okay so these two rays end up traveling um parallel to each other and so this is what i was saying earlier that the um, image will be over here so you trace the rays back and the image will be at infinity and so therefore when you're looking through the telescope your eyes are focusing on infinity just like they would be if you were looking at the stars um, in the sky okay so hopefully that makes the diagram not quite as complicated as it did as it seemed before um, and i asked you to um, copy down this diagram uh, before the lesson if possible if not um, just make sure you've got it um, because they, they quite often ask this in exams to draw a ray diagram for a refracting telescope in normal adjustment that's just what this is called um, an important thing to note is that the length of the telescope is determined by the two lenses because the length of the telescope has to be the focal lengths of the two lenses added together and um, because that gives us this special case where the image of the objective lens is then at the focal point of the eyepiece lens Okay, so the length is always going to be FO plus FE. So that's an important thing to note down. Um, also, um, you um, need to think about these two angles. Okay, so th these two angles determine how magnified the object is. Okay, so that's why we use telescopes, isn't it, to magnify things so that you can see them more clearly. And if you just look at those two angles, you can see that alpha is bigger than beta. And the ratio of how big they are compared to each other determines how magnified it is, which hopefully that makes sense. Um, now, in your data booklet, you're given this equation, but you're not given alpha over beta. Or you're not told what alpha and beta are. Okay, so you've got to understand or remember what these mean and they've got waffly fancy words um, and so it can sometimes be a bit confusing when you see in your data booklet this bit m equals angle subtended by image at i angle uh, divided by angle subtended by object at unaided i it 
it's all just a bit flowery and so it's hard to remember what that actually means so angle subtended just means angle made by okay so it's the angle made by the image at the eye so that means you're at the eye so it's this angle here so this is the image so it's this angle alpha okay so this one is the one closest to your eye so you can think of it like alpha is the first in the alphabet so it's the one closest to the eye that's one way of remembering the other angle angle subtended by the object so here's our object at the unaided eye so our eye is uh, basically on this principal axis and so it's the angle between those two okay so the magnification is the ratio of those two angles okay? and you are given that in the data book um, the other equation that you're given um, I'm going to show you how you get to the, the other equation uh, you don't need to know how you get to it but it's quite straightforward um, so for this one we need to think about this bit here so we have a height of this image okay um which is y and that creates two triangles so we've got one triangle on this side and then we've got a smaller triangle to the right of that arrow okay um, and we also know the length here because these are the focal lengths so this is fe and then this bit is fo we also know the angles because the angle here so this angle over on this side is alpha so that's geometry because there um, is z angles um, and this angle here would therefore be beta so we know one of the lengths of the size and we know one of the angles so that means we can use trigonometry to work out what y is. Um, and y is obviously the same for both of them, so that makes life easy as well. Um, so because uh, so we've got y, we've got f, o and f, e. So if we look at this triangle, first of all, we've got y and f, e. We don't know what the hypotenuse is, but we know this angle. So if we know the angle, we know the op opposite and we know the adjacent. Then we know that the tan of the angle, so tan alpha, is opposite y over Fe. Okay, so tan alpha equals y over Fe. Um, and then likewise for this side, tan of beta would be y over Fo. Okay, so that's this little equation here. But we also know that um, these angles are going to be very small. Okay, because most of the things are, uh, we're looking at are very straight up, so the angles are tiny. Um, so we can use what's called the small angle approximation, which we I talked about when we were doing diffraction gratings. And that just means that tan alpha is approximately equal to alpha. So therefore, we can get rid of that tan bit because that confuses things. Um, so ooh, um, I've got to stop moving my cursor so you can see it. So M we know from previous slide is alpha over beta, the ratio of those two angles, but we also know tan alpha is y over fe. So therefore, because of small angle approximation, alpha equals y over fe, and beta equals y over fo. So therefore, we can just substitute that in. So alpha is y over fe, beta y over fo. And because the y's are the same, they cancel. So you've got one over fe, divided by 1 over FO, which basically flips up the other way, and you get FO over FE. Okay, And this is a much more useful equation because um, the angles are quite difficult to measure, but the focal lengths are very easy to measure because you, when you've made or bought the lenses, you know what focal length you can easily, if you don't know what they are, you can easily measure the focal length of um, lenses. When you buy a telescope, you're going to know what they are because it'll tell you. Um, so that's a much more useful equation to so FO over FE. Okay, and again, that M equals FO over FE is given to you in the data booklet. Um, not all the rest of it, but you don't, you wouldn't need to know how to get from one to the other.
Okay, so that is how a refracting telescope works. Okay, so it takes takes light in from the objective lens, focuses at a point, and then the eyepiece lens then um, uh, takes the light and, and sends it to your eye. Okay, um, just need to talk to you um, through a few problems with lenses, um, and these are called aberrations, which is a posh way of saying problems. Um, so you, this first one is called the chromatic aberration. And a chromatic aberration is, um, so aberration means problem, chromatic colour. Okay, so it is to do with wavelengths. And this is because, as hopefully you remember from the waves topic, the lens refracts the light, but it has the refractive index of the lens changes depending on the wavelength. So different wavelengths have different refractive ind indices of uh, the lens. So they are refracted by different amounts. Okay, so each of the colours there you can see are refracted by different amounts on here. And so it ends up with this blurring. They're not all focused in at the same point. So here's an image of a uh, weather vane. So you've got the horse. So you've got the main bit is fine, but around the edges, you've got a blurring of this uh, rainbow colours where it's just spreading out. OK, so you've got that dispersion effect. And um, the other type of aberration you need to know about is called spherical aberration. Um, and this is due to the curvature of the lens. So I said this had to be very precise in order to get all the rays focused at the right point. Um, so if that's not done quite right, uh, so maybe cheaper lenses or not not quite so well made, then they don't all meet at the same point. OK, um, so this is what you should get if there was no aberration. So you get nice four nice circles of bright light. But if there is aberration, if there is this spherical aberration, you get a blurring around the edge. OK, so it's all fuzzy. So if you're looking at a star or a planet, through um, your telescope or whatever, it's going to look a bit blurry, so you don't get a nice, clear, sharp image. So how can you fix this? So this is um, how we can fix the chromatic um, aberration, and it's called an achromatic doublet. OK, doublet because there's two lenses, and achromatic because you're trying to bring the colours back together. Um, so here we have a... Um, converging lens and a diverging lens next to it and they're glued together or some, uh, set, cemented together um, not with actual cement and uh, the light ray passes through the um, converging lens and then so that that um, disperses the light but then the second lens because that is designed to bring them back together um, kind of reconverges them again Okay, so that they're closer together. Okay, so that's one way of fixing it. And that is it for refracting telescopes. Um, next, we'll be looking at reflecting telescopes. Okay, don't forget if you've got any questions, please let me know.